Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, coming in with this week's power. It was sex yeah. week, wasn't it? Sex week, man. All right, let's go <laughs> ahead and do the YouTube thing. If you're not subscribed to the channel, but you keep coming back every week, and my algorithm keeps telling me that you come back every week, you might as well just commit. I know, yeah. I know. Some of you all have a commitment issues. Just go ahead and hit the God don't subscribe button. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> and while you're already here, go ahead and rate the video. Thumbs up or thumbs down at this point. It don't even matter. Yeah. It's already been counted. And while you're at it, go ahead and share us on your social media platforms. That way it helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get into it. And before we get into it, let's apologize huh? because we're late. Yeah. But the reason that we were late is because we were stuck in the woods for four hours <laughs> on Saturday and it just messed our whole freaking weekend up. You want to learn about that? Go over to our vlog channel, yeah. Life With Us TV. It'll be linked down below. Let's get into Let's Sex get Week. Let's get into it. Yeah. First, I want to say that this week's episode, I felt like it was a filler. I feel was. like nothing really, really happened uh, that we probably could have did without this episode. <clears throat> and coming back off the break, I don't think we need to be going that Slow. We need to be going fast as <clears throat> yeah. hell. Yeah, we need to pick up. We need to pick up the pace. Uh, but with that said, uh, it was so many scenes that just didn't make any sense. At and, least not to me. Yeah, and and one of those scenes was when it first came on. Kane is with the GT GTG boys robbing the god doing church, and I'm like, come on, Kane, we, haven't we been through this, man? Like, your mom there was like. You want to be a part of the organization, but you keep on doing stuff that's bringing undue attention yeah. and getting your tail, getting yourself locked up. And you know, when you're in the drug game, you want to stay as far away from the feds and police as you can. Yeah. But he always bringing the attention. And then what, what had happened while they were in there robbing the church, remember there was a guy, I don't know if he was a junior deacon or what he was, but he peeped old boy's tattoo. Yep. So he knows who this crew are. is yep. that's coming in here to rob this church. Yep. And they knew that this church had good and large sums of money. Exactly. So I'm confused about, is this really a targeted church or is this is this a, a cleaning church? Hmm. Like, what's going on with this church for you to just pinpoint this church and knew that they had large sums of money like that. Now, I know that churches do have large sums of money, but yep. this church had a whole ATM yep. and all of that. Yeah, so they was they was, they was was racking cash. And the first thing I need to know is, where in the hell was y'all armed security at while y'all back there counting all that money? Y'all y'all in the city. Y'all in New York. Y'all yeah. know about us. Yeah, why in the world is you back there like that, just you and the deacon counting money? Hello. And since when do the pastor count the money? Never. <laughs> yeah, pastors don't use the count the money because they're afraid the people in the church are going to accuse them. And they back, you back there stealing the money. <laughs> like we said, power will give us some unrealistic scenes and we yeah. just got to go with it. Yeah, got to go with it. Yeah. So we back at Stanford and as we saw that Tariq didn't get a high enough GPA to graduate from Chronicle Studies early. That was his goal because yeah. he wanted that money that Ghost left him. So after class, Professor Ingram was kind of trying to, you know, soothe him over and be like, it's going to be okay. But your boy Jabari is sitting over in the cut being jealous because he thinks Tariq is smashing her. That's like wrong like, student. Yeah, wrong student. Somebody Way off. is smashing, but not and, him. And I'm like, you can look at the two and tell there ain't no chemistry, at that all. it's all school all. and business. So I... I yeah, but I guess when you jealous, you 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 don't even nothing see, makes see, yeah. sense. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but anyway, so we back over at Modem House. It's two days to the re up, and Kane been missing for three days. <laughs> so we didn't realize that Kane never came home from that never came a whooping home. that his dad and them put on him yep. over at the prison. So Diane was like, "Ma, you know, we got to meet DJ uh, DC uh, DJ when DC Joe, Joe. <laughs> in two days." And usually Kane is with you on a re-up and pretty much we can't do this without Kane. Which she was like, I can do whatever. Say whatever. That, she said, Well, me and Drew can go. I was like, uh, I don't know about that. Drew ain't got no respects in these streets. Yeah, so you know, you need Kane. You need the crazy one to uh to go with you. So then we seen uh Mr. Simon, um, husband, decides to roll up on Tariq because the act is getting so many orders. 
but they ain't enough product to supply the orders that's coming in. So he like, I want my money. We need to get this thing back up and pop. And Tariq was like, first of all, don't be rolling up on me like this because you ain't even worth the money that I'm paying you anyway. And your husband don't even know we doing this. Yeah. So you need to pipe down. And come to find out, since this is sex week, that freaking Simon was the one that started the, the freaking G party. It's That's like, cool. okay, 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 I see. I see. Rich white boy style. Yeah. But, once again, that didn't make any sense. Why would you show up at the school knowing what y'all doing? And at first, I would have been like, how can people just walk up into school? But I can remember. I guess that we did it all the time. Yeah, I remember I was um, selling. Got you know them they're gonna coupon things that you that you get <laughs> from the schools, and they sell them for like twenty dollars, get twenty percent off of uh, Pizza Hut and all that stuff. So I was out there telling our age. <laughs> so I was out there selling those things with this white girl, and we went to downtown Richmond, and we was at one of the universities down there. Just walking in. And so I was like, wait a minute, uh, we ain't supposed to be going up in there. She was like, come on, let's go. We're going to go and make this money. And I was like, she's going to get my black age locked up today for sure. Uh -huh. And the bad part about it, the professors and stuff, every time we went somewhere and tried to sell, it was like, you can't do that here. Y'all need to leave. She ain't paying no mind. Go around in this corner and start selling again. And then at the end of the day, they was like, well, what do you think? I was like, it's all right. It was like, you just saw her make $200. I'm like, yeah, I saw her make $200 in places that you weren't supposed to be. So I ain't fit new. I, I ain't tell them this, but in my mind, I'm like, I'm black. Yeah. So if I was in that school by myself, they would have called the cops a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so, the truth, though. Yeah, so Simon's uh, husband should have never even came to the school. That was dumb. Yeah. That was dumb. All right, so now we got McLean and, and Sax. So they are strategizing the game because the dude Steve Art, his boss, is on his tail because he he don't want to look bad to his superiors because he need a conviction on Tasha. So Sax told uh, McLean, "I'm gonna go see uh, Paws." And I was like, "Here we go." I said, "I thought Paws had went on <laughs> yeah, and started moved living on her, life. her life." Well, she did too. Yeah, she moved on. We found out she moved on her life. As soon as Sack rolled up on her, was like, "No, I I'm not going on the stand." I no, I don't know. I'm nothing. done. I'm done with all this. I moved on with my life. He said, "This ain't really a request." <laughs> yeah, this. You know, I can get a subpoena to get you. I was like, "Here we go, the Sacks, the Sacks way." Cause she was like, "I don't know nothing about the murder." He was like, "Well, that's all you got to get on the stand and say." And she was like, "Okay." And I'm like, "Come on, you know Sacks. You know how Sacks roll. Exactly. That it ain't gonna be that freaking easy." He and at this point, I don't even, I don't even blame Sacks no more. I blame the people who do the deals with him. I you do know, too. Because you know exactly he gon' he gon' fuck you in the A with no lube in the end. <laughs> You already know. And then you get mad because your tail's hurt. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true? Okay. It's the God doing truth. So, we knew it. Professor Ingram is still fucking Zeke. I'm like... I was hoping it was a one-time thing. I'm like, do you, do you value your job? Because I don't blame Zeke because I, mean, I know you do. if I was in college. And you were a special professor, you would. Oh, yeah. I would, yeah, I'd be game for that because that's, I mean, that's that's clout. I mean, yeah. like, you know, you get to go back and brag to your boys like, I'm screwing the, the professor. professor. How yeah. am I going to ever fail? So I'm like, is you that sex crazed that you don't value the hard work and effort that took that you had to put in to become a professor? You you fitting to throw that all away for a young dangling? For real? And Zeke don't mess around in court feelings. Like, he talking about something. I want to take you home to meet my auntie Monique. And yeah, she I was, was like, like... She was like, hold on. Like, uh-uh. Say, if this blows up... Uh, I could get in a lot of trouble here. But you ought to be... You ought to thought about that before but you fuck. started messing with him. Because... He all over at your place. And, like, wow. But look, I'm going to make a prediction that I got a feeling it's going to get out anyway. Oh, it is. It's going to get out. It is. I just hope to God that that she be gone by the time Monet find out about it. Because it ain't going to be pretty. Uh, no. I don't know how I feel well, What it. would you do if you find out that our young son, if, if we had a young son, got him in college paying all that money for him to be in school. 
and come to find out he effing his professor. Wow, I got somebody tutoring him, helping him, that he ain't even already doing his work, but he got enough time to screw, but not enough time to do his work. You would be good with that? I, I never said I would be good with it. I just don't know how I would handle it. Like me, me and old Ingram would have would have, have some words. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that's what I'm we saying. We would have a conversation. On. But then, the player player part of me would be like, so you got me over here paying this good money to yeah. Tariq to do your work when you screwing a whole professor. Yeah, you could have saved me my mother bucket money <laughs> and, and make her pass you along in the classes. <laughs> I mean, let's go ahead and keep the hustle in the family if that's what we're going to do here. <laughs> exactly. You know? So, now we have uh, Brayden and and, uh, and Tariq. So, Tariq, not Brayden, his brother. Her name Trace. Trace. Trace, Trace came to the room looking for, looking for Brayden. And... Tariq was like, pretty much, you need to get out of here. Or I'm going to call that big black dude back here to finish, the, to, uh, stole my skin. to finish off the job. So, Trace was like, I don't know what kind of freaky skit that you, my brother, and, and, Raleigh. and Raleigh got going on. But I found you passed out <laughs> in my room after whatever y'all did. And Tariq was like, I don't want in your room. It's like, yeah, you did. You so, did. finally... The bells is going off in his head like it's something with this Raleigh chick. But I'm like, it took you it this took long? this long to figure that out after all after all the questioning she been doing and yeah, just showing around. up. She just randomly just showed up. That's a dead giveaway right there. That is a dead giveaway. And, and she's yeah. always there. So that started getting his wheels finally turning. So he decides that he was I don't know where he was at, but he saw her going down the freaking subway. So he decided to follow her. I said, thank you. Yeah. So he followed her all the way to the court because y'all remember that she had to go to court because she had that two ounces of weed. <laughs> so when she was in court, she was like, I'm sorry, Your Honor. My, my uncle is late. I'm sorry. My lawyer is late. Uh, and he was like, yeah, the laws have changed and da, 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 da. And so Hagem Sachs walk up in court late and Tariq was like, oh, oh okay, I get it now. And so immediately he texts Brayden and was like, we need to talk. And I thought uh, he was going to come clean with Brayden and tell yeah. him that. Yeah. But I think he knew that he had to break Brayden's heart to get rid of her. Yeah, because you don't think he would have believed it. He would he would have been he might have would have left her alone for a little while, but she probably would have would have got her way back in. Yeah, and with Brayden, Brayden would be like, he on you, not me. So let me have my girl. <laughs> and you figure that skit out. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Because at first I ain't at first I didn't think it was gonna work because when Tariq told him, he was like, No way. No way. It took for his brother to confirm that it was true, which we knew it wasn't true. Cause she she drugged him, yeah. but yeah, but it took him his brother to confirm that in order he for him to even room. believe it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so uh, we saw you know uh, when we was back in class with uh, the new assignment about the four day power, laws of power that they had to team up with the students and Tariq chose Lauren as as his uh, <clears throat> as his partner of course player player. Uh, so they back at, at her dorm room, I guess it was her dorm room, and they get to talking and tussling like, you know, I need to know the secret because I need to pass, Tariq, I need to pass. Then her boyfriend just pops up, takes a picture, and I'm like, this dude He's is... He's like, look at you. This dude is weird. I'm like... And yeah. Tariq's like, hey, bro, don't you, don't no, you go to nigga. school? Yeah. Nigga, don't you go to school in D.C.? So how are you always, always here in New York? Yeah, just showing up out of nowhere. I mean, that's like... It's like, like, is he a cop? Like, is he a no? I'm like, this is like hella weird. I understand that's your girl and everything, but still give her the common courtesy to like text a call and be like, hey, baby. He acts like her dad. Yeah, I'm coming to the school to see you today. No, he just pops up like Michael Mox. Like, you come gotta on, talk bro. about these cards that they trying to um try to keep secret from each other, but they try to figure out what's in the envelope and on these cards. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Yeah. So old Jabari, <laughs> he goes over to Professor Ingram's house and he saw all the signs that there was a student in her apartment getting yep. sex down. But he still thinks it's Tariq. Tariq. <laughs> so he decides to take the card and switch out 
the saying on the card and give it to Tariq. And Tariq's card said that there's a professor sleeping with a student. At Stanford. At Stanford. <laughs> wow. I'm like, bro, you just, you just, you just gone. I was saying, you just, you just gone. So that, that, that segue us into that Jabbar decides to reach out to the Reek for a meeting. Yeah. So he was like, okay, you want another crack at, you know, pretty much graduating early. You want to do something for some extra credit? And Tariq was like, Anything. hell, I'm bang. Whatever you want me to do, coach, put me in. I'll do it. So he was like, I need you to write a, rela- a, a, natu- we said a natural power of relationships, but I need you to dig deep. That's it. And I need details. details. And I'm like, bruh. You are crazy. You, you are crazy that, you know, in other words, he expected for Tariq to write some details about Professor, I, professor and the stuff that they doing and stuff like I'm, I'm like, what kind of freaky Zane stuff is this, man? <laughs> like, I, I need yeah. to read one of Jabari books. Right. <laughs> <laughs> for, for real, for real. So Tariq was like, bet. I'll do it for some magic. I'll bet. I'll do it. I mean, but then again, I, was, I thought Tariq would be like, uh, if he would catch what that, like, yeah, what does that, that have to do with chronicle studies or what we've been doing? And writing freaking romantic novels to you for extra credit that don't <laughs> that don't that don't make sense but we know sometimes Tariq is a little slow to catch on so now we at court and pa- pause is on the stand and, and <laughs> yeah and so Sax started questioning so it was going good at first but every time that Sax would turn around and look that eye he would flip he was like I gotta do something so he started pressing on Paz, was, and he convinced Paz that Tasha paid her <laughs> to silence her because she was the one that committed the murders. So, or at least, yeah, was the one who gave the orders. Gave the orders, yeah, gave the orders for the murder, and Paz believed it. And of course, Tasha can't keep her poker face on. She, Ooh, what, what are we gonna do? I'm like, you, Tasha you in court? Up. You letting them know that you're guilty? Based upon what's being said by your reaction. Or you rattled at least. Yeah, like come come on. So McLean was like, Sax don't know who he fucking with. <laughs> he said, I got something for that. So, so, you know, he did his thing. He got there and flipped it around on pause and pretty much be like, Okay, so this supposed to went that way. So it sounded like to me that you got paid to shut your mouth. Yeah, because he's like, yeah. why would James St. Patrick leave you money? Yeah. When he was messing and screwing with your sister, why yep. would he? He's like, oh, it's not like it's so much yeah. money. So he me. was like, well, do you have any evidence that Tasha was a murderer? And she said, no. He said, no, no further question, y'all. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, Sax. I don't know why he ain't even fired. He yeah. should have been fired. I am over Sax. Yeah, I, he should. He, he yeah. should have. He should have been been. Fire. And if McLean don't hurry up and flip the script and get rid of Sax for us, I'm a sick of him too. <laughs> yeah. So now we come to the day where it's time for the re-up. So uh. DC Joe comes in. But y'all remember that Diana had went to go find Kane because she was like, I ain't finna let mama do this all by herself. So obviously she knew, must have knew that DC Joe can pop off real easy, especially, I guess, if he feel like he can pull over one because Kane ain't there. Mm-hmm. So she found Kane over at the girlfriend house. She read, she read her, said, I know he here because you wouldn't be able to fool none of that stuff you got on but that juice in your hand. And she's like, Kane. And so she come convinced him to be able to come back because he was like, mama don't want me around anyway. Like, yes, she do. Like, yes, she do. She been asking me, like, lie. You know? no. He said, all right, I'll come through. So... He was on his way to go over there, but he got picked up for the robbery at the church. So that left them high and dry. But Diana, thinking on her feet, she called Tariq after uh, Kane wouldn't answer his phone because yeah. Mo was like, you said he was coming. Where the hell he at? So things kind of started going on like it's going to go out without a hitch. And then Mo was like, I, call, I told Rico... I want all the pills, but I want half the coat. He was like, well, Rico didn't pass that memo along to me, so. I can leave you half. I can leave you half, but I'm going to leave with all my money. (laughs) 
which I can feel him because I guess you call him DC Joe, that he drove all the way from DC to New York to make the drop. That's what I'm thinking, but I don't know. And if you're trying to play me. Yeah, that's a long way to go to not, yeah, yeah to not get all, get all my paper. So he was like, you know, if I don't get all my paper, it's going to be a situation. And it was. And so I think that he put, he wanted to pull out, he pulled out the box cutter. Because I saw yeah. about, yes. Yeah. 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 So he pulled out the box cutter to go at her. So Tariq and uh, Diane was down in the basement. And they heard. And they heard it. And so Tariq came up there and was like, what you doing in here, Ninja? And that distracted him long enough for Mo to pull a gun out and, and shoot him. It. Yeah. So, yeah, that could have went way, <laughs> way, way worse than it really did. All that because Cain wanted to be at the church trying to rob and get money. And last week when he did that skit, they had to get his tail beat for putting his hand on his mouth. So after that, uh, Mo was like, what is Tariq doing here? And Diana was like, I, I'm Kane, glad. Yeah, I'm glad that I did because look what would have happened. So she was like, we need to get rid of this body. So Tariq was like, I got I you. Got it. She was like, no, you no, no. Just. No, I'm going to get Drew to do it. And it was like, Drew can't do this. Tariq was like, Drew can't do this by himself. So we saw them out there. They took old boy and put him in a box truck. And Tariq was like, give me the gun so I can pretty much shoot him. Uh, and uh, Drew was like, no. We need to make this look like a homicide. Hold him up in the truck. And Drew went around to the window. Bop. I was like, okay, so Drew ain't is. I said, Drew pulled a trigger on somebody. Like, what? I didn't and see that one And won't skin and didn't flinch. Cause I ain't expect, yeah, I ain't expect for him to be a trigger puller. Nah, at all. Yeah, at cause all. He, that, 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 yeah. But. Okay, that's all right, lover boy. Uh -huh. Get it. And smart. Cause I, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I guess. Cause I mean, you have a dead body who is known to be at this drop. Yeah. So when he don't show back up to his boss, Mo, what, what happened to my dude? Yeah. Like, what's gonna, yeah, is what's this, gonna happen? this is not over. Yeah. Uh, well, definitely not over. All right. So after court, uh, like these last couple of episodes, freaking, it ain't been McLean. It's been, <laughs> it's been meth. So meth came, came to Sax off. He said, Sax, what the F was that? And Hank on Sacks making excuses. Well, well, such as Steve was on my tail, so I had to do what I had to do to get him off my A and, and da 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 da. But I have another plan. And Meth was like, no, I'm done. I thought we had a deal. And so he handed the file to, uh, to Meth, and he was like, we got this girl named Epiphany, and I think that she can help us out if we get her on the stand. Because y'all remember Epiphany. Used to help Tasha push the push the products through the, through the guy through the day well, not no, through the, day the strip day, club. through the strip club. But I don't think Epiphany is gonna snitch because if Epiphany snitch on Tasha, she's snitching she on, on herself. herself. So that ain't gonna work. But I don't know. She might can be flipped though. I don't know. All uh, I know is Sax has to go. I'm so over Sax. I'm over <laughs> meth right yeah. now. <laughs> Because you playing this game with Sax. Just go and you, ahead and defeat him. Get our people off and just call it a day so we can move on. Yeah, but I but I understand Stan understand uh McLean dealing with Sax because they had a deal is that we need to get Tasha off and we're gonna get Tariq. So that it's a win win. You got to win for your boss, and I, I got to win for my career. Cause I won the biggest case in New York. So that's why I, uh McLean is putting up with his skit. But I, I would throw in the towel and be like, just, just go and get Tasha off and move on about your life. <laughs> now, McLean going to flip on Sax, too. And, he, and Sax going down, I'm just ready for it to happen. Yeah, let it, let, let, it, let, let it be done quickly. Yeah, let nature take its course. Yeah, so since Cain had been, been gone for so long, because we remember uh, that eventually uh, when, he was in, when he got picked up, uh, he tried to make his phone calls. And the only person he could reach was Rodriguez. And so Rodriguez was like, you need to cut your skit, man. You need to get your skit together. You bringing too much heat down on the organization. Is Rodriguez or Ramirez? Ramirez, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sorry. Say, yeah. I'm going to change his name. I was like, who is that? I know I'm tired, but I was like, oh, who is that? So Kane was like, you know, just in case you didn't know, Mama is revamping the whole organization. And so he was like, huh? 
she was like, she doing, she pushing on um, Tariq. Uh, Tariq over at, at the freaking school. And she He was like, she dealing with Tariq? <laughs> He was like, yeah. He and said, and Nick's, it might be you too. Yep, Nick's might be you. So they come back to the house, and Mo was like, came with a, what the hell, what in the hell you been? To, it was the re-up, and it went wrong. And so Tariq name came up in a conversation, yeah, and Kane looked at, looked, at, looked at him. He was like, see? see? And so Mo was like, pretty much, because uh, he, he told him that, that they took care of DC Joe. And uh, uh, Ramirez was like, you want me to take care of it? And he was like, it's already handled. Me and Th Tariq and Drew did it. And that's how Tariq's name came up. I was like, uh-oh. And so, I don't know now if... Now Kane if, got a hard-on for Tariq. I mean, yeah, he already had yeah, a hard-on for yeah. him, but it's, it's on something now. And I wonder what that's going to do as far as the relationship with Ramirez and, and Mo. Is he not going to help anymore? Because she dismissed him like he was just. But a she bell. always does that. Though. Yeah, but I mean, but she really did it this time. It was like, I brought your son home. I got your son out of jail. I'm done with you now. Get on. Mm -hmm. That's what it was like. But people like that though. It's a cat and mouse game. But the way that men's egos are set up, be like, uh, lady, I just got your son out of jail. He lives for this. <laughs> <laughs> He at, is for at least kids. put some respect on my name. Oh my god! <laughs> but how about when Jabari called himself gonna roll up on Professor Ingram? Yeah, and she ended up flipping the script on him. It was like, dude, you don't wrote this in your handwriting. I think it's an admission of guilt of what you have done with a, with a student of your own. Yeah. So you got my card. I got yours. You may still work here after a little bit, but pretty much just he said you wouldn't do that. Business. You wouldn't do that. She was like, "Oh, I would, I would." I but said, I still, here they go. but I still got a feeling he's gonna find out about um Zeke. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, he definitely gonna find out about Zeke. But at that time, they can't tell on each other. They can't tell on each other. Nope, they definitely cannot tell on 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 each other. So we saw the scene where after uh, Kane came home and saw the scratches on uh, Kane's face. She knew that something went down when he went to go see Lorenzo. Oh, yeah. So she called Lorenzo was <laughs> like, what in the hell did you do to Kane? He was like, I need to teach him a lesson. She was like, you went too far. Mama's you Yeah, you don't understand. He is mine. Da -da 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 he was like, I had to do what I had to do, which I thought it was the right thing to do because he totally disrespected her. Yeah, he did. Totally. And not only disrespected her, but... Freaking elbows your mama. But in mama's fashion, mama's always look out for them boys no matter. Yeah, you don't no, want me to get on that one. Yeah, no matter what they do. Not my boy. <laughs> Not my boy. And so at the uh, at the end of the episode, we saw that Paz came back to oh, prison okay. to talk to Tasha. And uh, pretty much Paz told Tasha, you pretty much need to give up Cause you know who 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 killed ghosts, so you need to go and give him up so you can move on with your life. You don't but, belong in here, just like I would have never belonged yep. in here. I said, oh. But we all know she cannot she can't do, do that. It. She said, "You protected somebody. You need to give it up because it's got Dawn. It's your son, Tariq." But my question is, is it worth it? Ghost told her, "Stop, stop doing that." Cause Ghost wanted to give him up. He did. Ghost wanted to give him up and teach him a lesson. And then that got you killed. <laughs> got you killed. <laughs> but can you really believe that that power really killed off Ghost though? Like when yeah. you think about it, how it's like, it's like really? It yeah. Really killed off Ghost. Yeah. And now we stuck with this, man. I'm enjoying it, but like my husband said, is yeah this this. Why is it moving so slow? Yeah, it's moving very slow. For yeah. us to have all these goddamn books, I feel like I'm in Bible study. <laughs> Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty sound. To, uh, to the Holla. Holla.